In the rigging shop, there will now be a demonstration of class one double braid splicing. All right, we're just going to, never mind, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to start this out. I said we were going to do a class one double braid splice. Class one double braid lines are those in which the cover and the cores share the load. These are normally polyester and nylon. There are others out there, but they're quite uncommon. A class two would be those in which the core takes the load. Covers simply there for abrasion uh, resistance. So in order to do this, familiar, familiarize yourself with the splicing instructions. What you want to do is abide by the manufacturer's recommendations. Okay? So we're going to splice a half inch double braid. This is New England Stay Set. We're also going to be utilizing the R&W fit. This is a new fit, a new design which we have introduced and I'll show you the, uh, the way this will make your life easier when splicing double braid. You want to make sure that you take the appropriate size fit for the line and then you're going to mark back one full fit length. If you don't have a FID, what you need to remember is that a FID length is 21 times the diameter of the line that you're splicing, so that you can mark it back with a, with a tape measure if you want to. Once you have made your first mark, one FID length back from the end, you're going to form an eye. Using that mark, bringing it around to wherever you want. I'm just going to put a small eye in this. At the adjoining part, the other end of the eye, this is where we're going to open the line and remove the core. Now to do that, all we need to do is pry back the cover strands, taking care not to engage any of the core. Reach in. Grab it and bring it out. Prior to doing any of this, you should reach back at least 10 fid lengths. In this case, I'm going to add more and tie a knot. Use a figure eight. If you just tie an overhand knot, when you pull that, you're not going to be able to take it out. Once you've removed the core, stretch the cover back. Then from your knotted point, come back up and milk the cover back. You'll notice now that now the two are still very close. Hold where the core exits the cover, move back. You want to come back a short fid length. Now a short fid length is the upper half, it's about the upper third of this fid. Put a mark there. Now, if, if we were using a shackle or any other piece of hardware that had to be captured, this would be the time to put it in. So I'm going to take back my cover, remove the tape,
and I'm going to taper back slightly. I'm just going to remove this. I don't need to pull back a whole lot. Two or three inches is all you need. In the end of the new fid that we have, there's a small opening. We'll just insert that tapered end through here. Place. And lay it back on itself. We will enter the core at the mark that we made. I'll have to just find it again. Ensure that you don't snag as you're passing down through. You want to go down fid length. And we will pull that out of there. Let's see if we get that again. Okay, we have our first drawing of our gift certificate and gift bag. It's going live. This line is so loose that we may have to use tape just to hold it. Problem with this line is it has no memory. Memory is the tendency of the line to remain in the shape it's been in. Pin this so that it doesn't pull back through. You can use anything, just have to use another small fit. So we've inserted the cover into the core. Now we need to insert the core into the cover. We will go back and find our original mark, one fit length from the end, right here, and we will enter the core at that point. We insert down through here, we want to make sure that we don't snag any of the core. 
in order to check to see if you have, just pull the core. If it still slides out nice and easily, you won't have a problem. You haven't snagged it. Again, we're going to go down. And walk it down through. Now in this case, where it didn't taper, we're going to get a bulge right here. That's going to allow me to show you one of the nice things about these fits. Previously, you would have had to use a pusher and try to push this down past the uh, this junction. With these fids, everything above a quarter inch has a nice little hole here at the end of it. That will allow me to take a small line pass it through Surges not. Form a loop on the end. At this point, all I really have to do now is to pull it through. Okay. Now, if I can't pull it through easily, I can reach over here. Reach over here to my fixed eye. Look on the end. And then just nice and easily pull it through. You don't have to do a. It makes that just so much easier. Now. We need to give this a tug. What you really need to do is this transition point where the cover and core enter each other. That has got to be tight. So we'll just snag it, pull it, so you feel it pop. Now we're going to taper the ends. And these, you're just going to open it up. This will all be hidden down inside. But you need to make a good taper. If you don't have a taper, if you have a sudden change in the diameter of your line, you've introduced a weak spot. And you will, the line will fail. So we want a long, gentle taper. Milk it back in. Now, I'm going to pull the slack out here. Pull this in and see where the cover exits, or the core exits the cover. I make a mental note of where that is because I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut that off because this other line is not going to get sucked up inside. And again, we're going to taper this. sure that we tuck this in. If you're trying to read a book or trying to watch 
a video to do this, there's certain things that they don't really tell you. You have to maintain tension so that this outer core doesn't bunch up here at the transition point. If you do, that last pull to try and to bury that transition point is going to be bare. It may not even go. It's much easier if you Tension okay. on both of these so that we don't get a bunch up here. And then all I'm going to do is grab some of the cover, look it up, and at the same time, move my fingers back. So let this rotate in. Not too difficult. Here, grab some more. Just milking that in. Now, as we get up here, as it starts to thicken, it's a little tighter in here. For those of you who haven't seen one of these, come on up and grab this. I want to show you just how tight it gets. Go ahead, if you haven't seen this, Going to be, uh, see how flexible this line is? Yeah. Oh my God. It's very firm. It is. It's quite firm. Okay. In order to loosen this up, we're just going to flex it. You need to flex it, otherwise, you're not going to get it back down. Come back, take any slack we get. And pull this up. Now for those of you with large fingers like myself, when we do a small eye, we get to the point that our fingers get in the way. So all I'm gonna do is insert a small marlin spike, marlin spike and Pull this up. At the same time, rotating this in. Getting closer and closer. Just about there. Grab a little bit more. And I'm going to give it a snap. Set it through there. Right up here, we've got some slack. And then see that that snaps right back inside. Now, some people say, well, okay, you're done with your splice. No, we're not. This splice will hold under tension. But it will work out if we don't stitch it. Even though you've got two lines in opposition, they will still work out if you don't have So we will put a whipping here. But any whipping that we make, the line will pass through. Okay? I'll stitch it and I will whip over it. Do what's called a palm and needle whipping. A common whipping where you just make a loop, wrap it around here, will do absolutely nothing for it. They're temporary whippings, they're not intended to be used permanently. So, questions about this? Are you going to stitch that now? I am going to stitch it now. Okay. Just to see how you go through that. Just to see how I go about doing it? 
Well, I reach up here. Yeah. And I'll grab a needle. And this one's already, uh, that's blue. I really don't want blue on that. Huh? Somebody might get upset. So. Take some white whipping twine. Here comes the most difficult part for me. <laughs> we'll pass the needle through the side. We want this to go through both sections that are there. Pieces of the core to cover. We want to make sure we stitch everything together. I recommend a palm of some sort. Yeah. What? Okay. Do you have something else on that leather? Another leather? I mean, in there? Oh, what this is, is that? This is outer cover is rawhide. Yes, but what is that dot there? Is that something hard? That's a metal thimble. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Not seen anything like that. Oh. Super. Sailor's Tom, awesome. I don't sail, so maybe I'll start sailing it. Sailboat. Stick. We'll just pass through here. Now, all I've done there is I've locked my locked my line, and then I'm going to take it and whip it around. Now, good whipping should be the minimum, the diameter of the line. Uh, in this case, since I've stitched through here, I'm not holding the line together. I'm just protecting my stitches. So, we're going to make a small whipping around here. It is a thimble. It's a sail. Get it through, remove it. If you don't get it through where you want it, remove it. Now, sometimes on a small needle, it'll bind in here. We'll take a pair of cutters, but notice that I've taped the ends. I don't want teeth to mar the needle. Okay. It's a good way to ruin your needles. It's just going to grab it, hold it in place so that you can pull it out. Time, the second time's not there. It goes. And we bury our needle to lock it in place. I'll bring it down through and across. Now, you need to cut these ends off. I will cut them off with my knife. Watch. Don't saw with the knife. It's a good way to cut through your line. Lay it up next to what you want to cut and move it. 
easy. You don't cut what you just what you just spliced. And that's it.